everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about inventory counts. Before we go ahead, remember to subscribe to our channel and leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the videos because this is gonna help us grow. Moving back to the topic, today we talk about inventory counts and why it's important to keep track of the inventory that you store in any warehouse worldwide. So let's understand why you need to make sure that you have an accurate inventory because it ends up in your balance sheet. So making sure that at the end of the year you actually have accurate inventory, you're not missing anything and you're not overestimating something that is actually not physically present is really important. So that's what a lot of companies do on a yearly basis or even quarterly uh, basis or every six months. There's always what we call a cycle count or an inventory count. Generally the most common, no matter how big is your organization, is to have it once a year at the end of the year. So generally it's the last working day pretty much, but there are countries that allow you to do the count, for example, within a certain amount of days from or before the end of the year. And that could be two weeks, that could be 10 days, one week and so on. So you could even count, it doesn't have to be the last day of the week, uh, sorry, the last day of the, of the year, but it could be also one week before, something like that. It really depends on which country and jurisdiction you are, um, let's say your company is incorporated, but pretty much. We can say that you should do it by the end of the year, but if you don't do it on the last day of the year, then it means that you need to reconcile everything that you shipped and sold uh, over that period of time until the end of the year. So let's say that you are doing the count, you're performing the count on the 5th of January or 6th of January or the 10th, because you're allowed to do within the first two weeks of the new year, then you will need to reconcile anything that was sold from the 31st of December until the day you actually count. So you see, that's kind of tricky, but at the same time, you may not want to have um, the inventory count performed the last day of the year because you may want to sell as much as you can and empty out the warehouse. Sometimes you can estimate that if you're already running low on, uh, let's say, stocks, you may want to actually do the count, perform the count in the new year, so you can just sell everything and ship all the orders that you receive. Uh, before the end of the year, maybe add additional cutoffs to ship as much as possible so that you have less inventory. But that's not the only reason, the fact that ends up on your balance sheet. It's also like, especially in the cases where you have a very high ticket product, you want to actually um, make sure that you don't lose any product. Also because the warehouse has what we call a shrinkage, right? So the warehouse anywhere, they're always gonna have a percentage uh, of allowance, let's say of shrinkage, where they're actually allowed to lose inventory without compensate, without the need of compensating you. So this means that if they, if you have a high turnover and you have a lot of inventory that you send on a yearly basis and then you store, hundred devices can have maybe a low impact, but still, it's like if it's something that it's cost uh, you a thousand dollars or something like that, hundred units is actually a very big amount of products to lose. But maybe sometimes you have just a couple. But it really depends on how. Uh, let's say pricey uh, is your product, how valuable it is, and uh, eventually that percentage may harm you or not. It really depends, the shrink rate percentage. So having an inventory count is so making sure that you don't find after maybe a few years that there's a huge match of stocks, that you actually don't have all the stocks. Because it's normal to lose something over the time and maybe you don't, ha you don't consider all the stocks that you have in the warehouse, you know? Sometimes they're not all visible in the systems that you have access to, WMS or whatever so you may not consider them but when you have an inventory count at the end of the year it's where you actually see everything you have stored so it's also good for you to kind of reconcile it's not only for the shrinkage that the risk of losing products or uh, the fact that you will need to probably provide those uh, amounts the inventory count to your auditor but also for the fact that you may want to reconcile yourself what uh, the, the, the internal records and make sure that you're actually forecasting or you have the right amount of uh, let's say inventory by the end of the year same as forecasted or something like that so you may want to make sure that whatever is left actually matches your records as well regarding how often you need to actually perform an inventory count there's no law that imposes you to actually perform an inventory count on a monthly basis, quarterly basis or yearly basis. Eventually there is for the yearly, for the end of the year, but 
uh, it's more um, I think for the for the overall like cycle like how many times you want to do it it's really up to you and the requirements that you have also from auditors pretty much I think if you have a very high value product and you have a lot of fulfillment centers or a lot of warehouses and the stocks are distributed pretty much everywhere I think it makes sense to actually have an inventory count every quarter or every six months at least especially if you have a lot a lot of turnover but another point to keep in mind is that you should make sure that you actually keep count in the sense that you need to kind of verify the actual numbers that you have like they give you an inventory count the warehouse will, will give an inventory count okay the date uh, and everything but what are you going to compare it against with like are you going to compare it uh, against some report that they send you or you download it by yourself or your internal reports because you should have different ways of comparing um, one of them is against the system data like any system that you're using any WMS any any third-party system you should be able to match right and see is there any mismatch be between what I see and what is actually physically available but also between your internal numbers maybe you didn't keep accurate records so that's not something that you should base the mismatches on you should actually have uh, like any system anywhere like your inventory management system uh, download a report or keep track of what was left at the end of the um, of the of the year most likely what uh, i suggest is that nothing should go out nothing should happen during the count which means no goods out no goods in everything stops you just perform the count and you start shipping later on like the first available date of the new year basically so those are the most important things to remember regarding the inventory count. Just make sure you have nothing that goes out or comes in the day that you perform the count. So you have accuracy of data that you download the report before and after the count, before actually starting shipping, just to make sure that those records are accurate at any point of time during that day, before and after the count as well. But also just make sure that you validate those numbers against your internal database, the systems, and, and maybe think about having multiple cycle counts during the year rather than just one by the end of the year uh, if your product is a high ticket product that's all for today thanks for watching remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video because this is going to help us grow see you in the next video